Bill Coates has arranged here a series of transmitters in which we're going to send a signal down several different forms of, of uh, radiated energy, one after another. Here we have a jet of water coming out of this glass jet here and going over to hit a membrane on the end of this tube here. On the jet, he's now going to put a small ticking clock. And now ripples going down the jet start very, very small, but they get bigger and bigger. And when they hit the diaphragm, one can hear the ticking of the clock. That experiment was first done in the Christmas lectures at the RI here in 1889. It's a long time ago. But we're going to follow it now by picking up that vibration with a laser beam. The membrane here transmits its motion by sound waves down the tube to another membrane at the other end. And on the middle of that membrane is fixed a small mirror. Over here we have a laser. You can see the beam, and Bill sprays aerosol into the beam. The beam is reflected from the mirror to a receiver here that then gets the message. We switch that on. If I put my hand in the way, it stops. And of course, if I stop the jet, it stops. Well, now I put another microphone round in front there to pick that up. And <coughs> Bill Coates has arranged that that microphone signal comes into this little box here and controls the current in an electric wire. So the message is now going down an electric cable to control this ordinary hand torch. And the hand torch is sending ordinary light, not laser light, over to a receiver here. Switch this on. And its signal is being picked up on this. Now I can chop this beam. And finally, of course, <coughs> that signal is being picked up by radio mic here with a, an aerial transmitting radio waves to the aerial of a receiver. And that is going through the cable up to the loudspeaker where you can all hear it. And also will be going out across the country by other radio waves in the form of television. To summarize, we've got the same signal now going through a water jet, then a laser beam, then a light beam, and then a radio beam. <clears throat> you may not think that the sound of a ticking clock is, is very interesting. Perhaps you prefer the sound of music. This can be arranged. <clears throat> Bill Coates can arrange almost anything. Sound of music going down a light beam. The only requirement is then that the energy can, trans can go from the transmitter to the receiver, carrying the message in some form which the receiver is sensitive to and that can decode. Let's have a look at some of the ways in which this coding is done. We have here, on the lower beam of the oscilloscope, a wave that could represent a light wave or a radio wave. In fact, it's uh, an, just an electrical signal that imitates any form of wave that will propagate from transmitter to receiver. On the lower screen down here, we have a spectrum of that wave. This is a graph of amplitude by frequency, and we see there is just one frequency there. It's a simple sine wave. Well, now on the upper beam of the oscilloscope here, we have a signal of one kilohertz. That's the same as the Greenwich time pips. And let's say we want to transmit that to some distant point by radio. The first way in which we can do it is to take the carrier wave, as it's called, the radio wave, and vary its amplitude. We can make it bigger and smaller in time with the signal that we want to send. 
So if I put the modulation on, you see it's now small at the trough of the wave and big at the peak of the wave. And at the receiver, if the receiver is expecting this sort of signal, it can follow those changes and give us back the original wave and use it, say, to drive uh, a loudspeaker to tell us exactly what time it is. But now look on the lower screen. We see that our single carrier wave has now become split into three. There are two sidebands, two smaller waves either side of the main carrier. And those are exactly one kilohertz either side of the carrier because it's one kilohertz, 1,000 waves per second we're transmitting. If I increase the frequency of the signal I want to send up to, say, 4 kilohertz, then the sidebands move further apart. They're now 4 kilohertz either side. That means that if we have a faster signal to send, we've got to use a wider range of frequencies to send it. <coughs> and that is a general principle, that if you want to send information faster, then you've got to use a wider range of frequencies, or a wider bandwidth, as it's called. There is another way of sending that same signal, where we don't use uh, amplitude modulation, but vary the frequency. If I press the button here, now the amplitude is constant, but we're varying the frequency of the wave. You can see that the waves are further apart here, having a lower frequency at the trough of the wave, and much faster here at a higher frequency for the peak of the wave. Well, that's rather an exaggerated form. Uh, we're using a very deep frequency modulation there. So I will just change it to a much shallower form. You can't see it now e so easily on the, on the screen. But if we look now at the spectrum down below, we see that there are many sidebands. And yet we're only sending the one simple sine wave of one kilohertz. FM radio uses five times the bandwidth that AM does. So it's not only very much higher fidelity, but it's also much more resistant to interference. And that's the main advantage of FM radio.